All right. Hello, everybody. So today we're going to finish up your last section of notes for chapter one. Hopefully a lot of this should be review uh, based off things that we've talked about before or that you've talked about in biology last year. This is really just talking about the periodic table in general. We're going to get a lot more in depth on it towards the end of this semester. But for now, we're going to stick to the basics of what are the different parts of the periodic table. So section 1.3 is all about elements and what elements are. So the periodic table organizes elements by their chemical properties. So yesterday we talked about chemical versus physical properties. Again, chemical properties are things like flammability, reactivity, and things like that. So when we look at the periodic table, we have them organized in a way that kind of explains how they all react. So depending on where they belong on the periodic table, kind of tell you a little bit more about them. So each box represents a single element. So for example, element one is hydrogen and is shown by the symbol of H. So here's an example of our periodic table. Again, so depending on which periodic or which element you're dealing with is going to tell you a little bit about them. So for example, hydrogen is H. It is the first one on the periodic table. So it gets atomic number one. And it kind of tells you a little bit about it. And it's found in our first row here. Same thing when we get to carbon. Carbon is number six. It has six protons in it. So that's why it's the atomic number six. It has the letter C to represent carbon. And all of these kind of all fall in there. Now some of them are better than others for their uh, symbol matching their name. Some not even close. So for example, like gold here. Uh, the atomic symbol for gold is AU. Uh, same thing with mercury, it's HG. A lot of this has to do with their Latin names, not necessarily uh, the names that we give them now. Okay, so with that, we have something called families or groups. A lot of times I just call them groups when we're talking about it with the periodic table. Those are the vertical columns of the periodic table. They are numbered 1 through 18 from left to right. Each group contains elements which are similar chemical properties. So for example, group two are all reactive metals with similar abilities to bond with other atoms. So if we're looking at our periodic table here, a group or family goes up or down. So this would be considered group one, then we have group two, and it goes all the way across to group 18. And again, they are all grouped together because of how reactive they are. So for example, group two here, these ones are all highly reactive. They love to react with other elements, and especially elements over here in group 16. These ones were generally all bond together. We'll talk about that when we get into bonding. Same thing with our group one elements tend to group with our group 17 uh, atoms or elements. So depending on where we're at, again, up and down the periodic table, this is a group or family. And again, an easy way to remember that is families generally behave very similar to each other. That's why elements are grouped together because they like to react very similar to each other. So group or family, up or down. Periods on the other hand are the horizontal rows of the elements in the periodic table. Physical and chemical properties change somewhat regularly across a period. Uh, some periods tend to be similar in elements in other periods. So for example, period two elements, lithium and beryllium are somewhat similar in properties, but very different properties from fluorine. So periods go across the periodic table. So those ones we have seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And again, they go across horizontally. Elements that are closer together in the period tend to behave very similar to each other. So for example, things like here, sodium and magnesium, they tend to be more similar to each other than let's say if we looked at sodium and let's say chlorine here. Those are two very different elements. They behave very differently. They are still found in the same period, but they're still different. Periods still go across, so period one is just hydrogen and helium. Same thing when we're looking at lithium and beryllium, it still just goes across. So even though there's not necessarily elements in that row all the way across, they still behave very similar, or they all go together in their period. So periods one through seven groups are going 
up and down. So here is our period two. So there are times where if I'm telling you to look for an element and you haven't gotten the master yet, I'll say, oh, it's group one, period two. So group one, up or down, period two is across. So you were looking at lithium to be able to find those elements. So they're nice, easy ways to remember group and families up and down, periods go across or go at the end of a sentence from left to right. Uh, same idea here. Okay, so uh, our periodic table is broken into three parts. So we have metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Uh, we're going to start with our metals here first. Uh, a metal is an element that is a good conductor and a good a conductor of heat and electricity. So these are found on the left side in the periodic table and in the center. So when we're looking here, this periodic table does a great job of listing out uh, some of our metals. Generally, we will say our metals start from group two, go down to group seven, go over to our transition metals, and they kind of follow this breakdown here and across and over. So the highlighted section here in black, these are our metals found on the periodic table. Uh, we could also include our lanthanides and actinides, which are the separate part of the periodic table. Um, they fall also within our metals. So all of these here are great conductors of electricity and also just conductors in general. So for example, we have like gold, we also have silver, copper, which is commonly used in electricity. We have nickel, iron. All of these are metals that we see every day, um, but they are great at conducting of heat and electricity. So our metals are those sections of the periodic table. Metals uh, have certain properties to them. So one is malleability. So the ability to be hammered or rolled into a thin sheet. We have ductile, can be molded or pulled into a thin wire. And then they also have a high tensile strength, which means the ability to resist breaking when being pulled. So if we're looking at metals, so for example, aluminum is a metal that is on the periodic table. And aluminum, we can roll into a very thin sheet. So that is malleability. It has a very high malleability, can roll pretty thin and still be used. Uh, iron or uh, copper, for example, is ductile. It has a great ductility to it because we can pull that into a thin wire and use it for uh, electrical wiring. And a lot of times it has a very high tensile strength, meaning it does not break easily. And so that you can pull it and it will not break. So each metal, depending on where they're found on the periodic table, will dictate the overall strength. Generally, if it's found on this side here, they're gonna be a little bit stronger compared to these ones here because we're transitioning uh, to the other side of the periodic table. Now, some elements are nonmetals or metalloids. Nonmetals is an element that is a poor conductor of heat and electricity. There are less nonmetals than metals on the periodic table. So the vast majority of our elements are metals, but there's a very small section that are considered nonmetals. So for example, phosphorus is one of the five solid nonmetals and is, react, uh, is too reactive to be in nature in its pure form. So you're never going to find a lump of phosphorus just sitting around on Earth. Uh, it will, will be found in some sort of compound because of how reactive it is. Generally, it's going to react with oxygen. Uh, that is found in the air. So our non-metal section is going to include hydrogen going down these steps over here all the way up and I forgot a couple and over. So this is considered our non-metals. Most of our nonmetals are found in the gas form. So like this group 18 here, we call this the, our noble gases. They are in the gas state the entire time. Um, the ones found in solid state would be carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, uh, chlorine, bromine. Those ones are generally going to be found in the solid state. The rest are found in some sort of gaseous state overall. But as you can see, it's a very, very small, small, small section of the periodic table is considered to be a non-metal. Again, they are very weak conductors of electricity and heat or just do not conduct it at all. So a lot of times if we have 
um, insulators, they're going to be made out of these elements here so that they don't conduct electricity well. And last but not least, our metalloids. Uh, they're elements that some characteristics of a metal and a non-metal. So they behave like both. They're not, that's why they're considered a metalloid, because they don't fit perfectly in just the metal section or just the non-metal. Uh, metals are solid at room temperature, but tend to be less malleable than metals and not as brittle as non-metals. So they're kind of that in-between. Uh, they tend to be semiconductors for electricity. So if we're looking for something where we really want to control how much electricity is being flowed through it, uh, we will use a metalloid uh, for electricity. So our metalloids is even the smallest section of all. That is this section right here. These kind of like sagey green oops, elements. So these section, so this section here is our uh, metalloids. So I kind of call it like the stair step because that's kind of what they look like. A lot of times you'll see lines that show where the metalloid section is just to separate between the metals and the non-metals. So again, they don't behave nicely to fit in one or other, so that's why they get their own section to their own. Not as strong as a metal, but still stronger than a non-metal. Uh, they don't conduct electricity great, but they still can. And so that's why they get their own column to uh, themselves. So uh, main things to take away about the periodic table. So we have groups or periods, or sorry, groups or families. That's the very going up and down periodic table. A group of families. Then we also have periods. Periods go across the periodic table. And again, we have seven of those. We have our metals, non-metals, and metalloids. So we have our metalloid section here our metal section is going to be oops, basically this section here with our lanthanides and actinides. And then our non-metals are going to be this last little group over here. So those are the most important parts. Groups and families, up and down. On the periodic table there are 18 of them periods go across the periodic table just like a period goes at the end of a sentence from left to right and then we have metals non-metals metalloids metals are our biggest section metalloids are our smallest because they behave both like a metal and a non-metal and then our non-metals are clear on the uh, right hand side okay so your homework uh, for the rest of the class period is the mixture and physical and chemical changes packet. You will need to have that colored. So now would be a great time uh, to get that done. You can also do it online if you do not have colored pencils at home. Also feel free to borrow some from me. Just make sure I get them back on Thursday. So yeah, this is due Thursday when you walk in since I will not see you tomorrow uh, due to retreat. If you have any questions, you can come see me tomorrow morning and I'll be happy to work this with you. Also, I have decided to switch your lab day. Your lab is going to be on Thursday and Friday we will review due to our pep rally and shortened schedule. Just wanna make sure you have plenty of time to get the lab done. So the sub is going to give you your lab write up. You need to read it and come with any questions that you have uh, tomorrow. So please let me know if you have any questions and I will see you on Thursday. Have a great rest of your day. See you Thursday, bye.